Eric Darling here with Darling Data. And uh, today's video, which is actually going to go up over uh, two parts, is going to be about uh, how you can write queries to be more batch mode friendly. <clears throat> um, if we were to start speaking like a Microsoft pamphlet or blog post, uh, then we would say things like, for customers leveraging clustered column store indexes for their analytical data warehouse workloads, or for customers leveraging non-clustered column store indexes for their real-time operational analytics workloads, or for customers interested in the intelligent query processing family of features, including batch mode on row store, videos like this are, are quite helpful. Um, because uh, like, I, I see I, I increasingly as, as time drags on and, and pulls people further into the future, uh, which at this point is about 2016 or 2017, um, maybe 2019 at the high end, uh, I see a lot of folks whose workloads could benefit from using uh, batch mode, but um, you know the, the way that their queries are written just, just doesn't work out. So that's what we're going to talk about in today and I guess tomorrow's video too. Anyway, uh, first, a little spiel schnitzel for you. Uh, if you would like to become a paying, supporting member of this channel and help feed a starving SQL Server consultant, you can sign up for a membership down here. And for as few as $4 a month, you can, uh, of course, do that. Uh, if you don't have $4 a month, perhaps you too are a starving SQL Server consultant. You can do all sorts of other things uh, to help this channel grow and thrive. You can like, you can comment, you can subscribe. And if you would like to ask a question privately that I will answer publicly uh, on my Office Hours episode, zodes, plural, uh, then uh, you can do that at that link, which is also quite helpfully down in the video description. If you need help with your SQL Server, perhaps you would, you would, you would like to help feed a family of starving SQL Server consultants, you can hire me. Uh, to, to do all of these things, health checks, performance analysis, hands-on tuning of whatever needs tuning, uh, dealing with SQL Server performance emergencies, and of course, uh, whipping your developers into shape so that you have fewer uh, performance emergencies, I am available for all of those things. Think of all the, the excellent benefits that come with uh, that sort of service. You can probably stop taking your blood pressure medication. You could you know, have all this extra money because your cloud bill goes down. All of a sudden, you you, you, you got extra cash, you can start buying yourself real food, stop microwaving burritos all the time, maybe hire a trainer or something. You know, it's all sorts of, all sorts of positive things will happen in your life if you hire me today. And as always, my rates are reasonable. Uh, if you would like to get some performance tuning training, I've got 24 hours of it. Uh, you can get it all for about 150 US dollars uh, at the, the link up yonder in the, 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 the coupon code right, right down below. Uh, that link is also available in the video description. Uh, if you would like to learn T-SQL from me with Eric, that's me, this guy. Uh, you can, like, the content is flowing fast and furious. I do two to four new videos a day. We are about 60 or so percent done with the read query portion. Uh, after that will be modification queries transactions and isolation levels, and then programmability objects. So we're gonna, we're gonna cover a lot of ground there. Uh, if you are attending the past pre-cons, you, you will get access to this material. Uh, the past pre-cons that Kendra Little and I are doing, you get access to this material as part of your admission there. If you are not, you can buy the course now for $250. That is the pre-sale price, no coupon code needed. This will go up to 500 bucks when the course is fully available uh, after the summer, when the advanced material comes out. Uh, that will be uh, non-negotiable at that point. If, so buy now, half price, good idea. Buy later, full price, bad idea, right? Especially if you are a starving SQL Server consultant. Uh, speaking of speaking, ha ha ha. Uh, I will be joining the Redgate Roadshow this summer, <clears throat> um, doing the Pass On Tour events, uh, New York City, August 18th to 19th, Dallas, Texas, September 15th to 16th, and Utrecht, which is a hamlet uh, in the Netherlands uh, so near Amsterdam. Uh, it is a lovely little place. I was lucky enough one year to get picked to speak at uh, Tekarama, which was also in Utrecht, and uh, it, it's a beautiful little place. You can walk the whole thing. Uh, great restaurants, great sort of scenery, 
There's a lovely Cuban cigar place there too. If you're, you know, interested in, you know, those things. If you decide to spend all your all your money on cigars instead of food because you're a starving SQL Server consultant, you could do that. Uh, and this is all leading up to Past Data Community Summit taking place in Seattle, November seventeenth to twenty first, uh, where the aforementioned precons will be will be happening. Where Hopefully I'll see you. You can, you can say many of the same things about Seattle that you can say about Utrecht. Uh, Seattle, of course, is not a hamlet. Uh, that, is a, that is a main differentiator there. Seattle is not a hamlet. But there, there is still uh, a fair amount of, of good scenery and good food. Uh, just, you know, mind, mind your surroundings a little bit <laughs> if you're in Seattle. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's go. Let's go talk about being batch mode friendly here. Uh, I don't know why that's highlighted like that. That's a very strange place to highlight. So this is taken from a real life customer example, but of course uh, I'm smart and I don't take customer data. I don't, I don't want any of it. Keep it. It's all you. I, I want nothing to do with it. Uh, but this is um, inspired by that. Of course, I just have the Stack Overflow demo database. So uh, I'm just going to keep kicking that tire for a while. So uh, what this query attempts to do is calculate what percentage of the total score uh, a particular post's score is, right? So we have the total percent uh, for like everything and then the percent that that post is of, of like for that particular post type ID. So let's run this query and I have this little filter down here. And the point of this filter is just to limit the results that get returned back to Management Studio because um, uh, there, there are a lot if I don't do that. So we're going to execute this and we're going to wait a little bit. Uh, more specifically, we're going to wait about eight or nine seconds for this thing to come back with some results. Uh, there we go. We're at the nine second mark. If you're paying very close attention, uh, you will see uh, down here, uh, somewhere near the edge of the screen, that it took nine seconds. See that little, that little doodad right there? Not lying to you. And the execution plan agrees, right? 9.341 seconds. All right. So uh, this query plan does have some batch mode elements, but we, we lose out on things where SQL Server's optimizer just, you know, chooses to do things a bit differently. Uh, we have a batch mode scan of the post table, which, you know, I feel like we're off to a good start, optimizer. And we have a, a batch mode a hash aggregate, which, you know, okay, we're, we're moving along here. And, and way over this way, we have a batch mode sort. But all of the rest of this stuff in here, th these iterators, these operators are not batch mode eligible, at least as of the recording of this video. Uh, stream aggregates, no batch mode. Nested loops join, no batch mode. Uh, so we, we really lose out on a lot of potential good, good vibes uh, with, with a query written this way. We can, of course, write the query a bit differently, and we can get batch mode to kick in by uh, doing something like this. And just, just so we, we, we make sure that you know, we have our results here framed up, I want to make sure that we look at these numbers for a moment and just you know, take, you know, take, take quick stock to make sure that they're they, we know kind of what they look like, spot any terrible, obvious differences. And what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this query to use window functions. So we are going to calculate our total percent here. and We are going to use sum over. So this is going to sum over the entire result set. Right? That's what this open sort of window, window expression uh, indicates. We have nothing in our parentheses here. It's just saying sum over it all. Right? Just give me the entire sum. And then we're going to use this sum window function, and we are going to give this one a partition by. Right? We're going to say partition by post type ID. And this, this means that we are going to uh, calculate a score for each partition ID and then uh, restart the calculation when we hit a new partition ID. It's at least fairly intuitive if you've used window functions in the past. And uh, this is also has an upside. So if we, we, we look back at this query plan, you'll see that in order to do this, we had to touch the post table on three separate occasions. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, right? So there, that is three total touches of the post table. The upside of this one is that we only touch the post table once. Now I've, I've retained the common table expression format here 
just to make make the make the query look a bit more you know alike so that uh, you know it's a bit less jarring to see a query rewritten in a completely different way uh, so I just retained the common table expression for that it has it has no real bearing or benefit on the, the, the query that we end up with. The important thing here is that we, we use the window functions and we touch the post table in, 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 in an, an entire one time. So if we run this query now, where we don't have to join to the post table, we will get back eight rows, and these, look, these numbers look reasonably close to what we saw before, at least from what I can recall of them. But the execution plan is much tidier, much nicer, and it, it is much more batch mode friendly. Uh, we do scan the post table, but that's okay. It's pretty quick, right? 700 milliseconds. We have a window aggregate. This window aggregate is a special batch mode aggregate that gets used for, uh, for window functions. We actually have two of those. There's one over here and there's one over here. But just to highlight things a little bit, uh, this occurs in batch mode, right? Uh, the window aggregate occurs in batch mode. Uh, the compute scalar is even in batch mode. This sort is in batch mode. Everything is just batch mode all across. Even this filter operator is in batch mode. And this whole thing takes a whopping one second. So we went from, I think, nine point something seconds down to one second uh, by rewriting the query. So, uh, well, I mean, A, it, it, is, it is far more batch mode right? We got way more batch mode happening, which is like the, which is a big important thing here. But also, uh, we did not have to touch the post table three times in order to get uh, our result back, to calculate our result. So not only do uh, window functions really help uh, make our queries, this, simplify our queries, right? Make things a lot easier to write. We don't have to juggle, you know, separate subqueries and worry about maybe messing up some logic in them and, you know, getting incorrect results back. But, but also it helps us to, um, to uh, make our queries more efficient because we no longer require separate trips to it to one or more tables in order to calculate whatever it is that we need to calculate. So uh, if you are out there struggling with uh, types of queries that do sort of data analysis stuff and you need to calculate things like this, uh, window functions will, will be a, a very, very good ally to you in your quest to uh, produce crack, fa uh, quip, blah, 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 produce correct results fast. There we go. Anyway, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And I will see you in the next video where we will, can, we will talk about another example of how to make queries more batch mode friendly. All right, cool. Thank you. Goodbye.